Good evening and welcome to Greater Grace Church of Chester and Ellesmere Port. Uh, we're doing our evening service a little bit early tonight for obvious reasons as we don't want to clash with Senegal. Tonight we're going to uh, be uh, just looking at a few verses of scripture uh, continuing on with our theme of the day. Incidentally, um, uh, a little a word of advice. Yes, this is the, the earlier than usual. Um, also, this week, slight changes. If you are free on Tuesday during the daytime, either morning or, or afternoon, or early evening, the plan is for us to have a little bit of a work day. Um, not massive, but at the church school for those who can. Uh, please contact my wife. She's a, able to be there. I will get be, will be along later on in the late afternoon, early evening. Uh, we are planning to have Bible school. Uh, come and eat with us. We could maybe even order in a pizza or something like that as well. Um, just uh, for the end of term for, for Bible school. We, we, it's not our last class forever, but it might be our last one before Christmas. Uh, and then also this Wednesday, I didn't announce that this morning, it's the ministry day of prayer. So let's have prayer on Wednesday night, 7.30. Uh, for those who can make it as well so that's uh, this week coming up let's pray and let's give this time to the Lord Heavenly Father we just thank you Lord for this time thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness bless our time tonight Lord in your word bless and encourage us uh, go before us now and just use this time for your glory's sake Lord touch those that need a special touch tonight Lord and speak to hearts, Lord, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to read again from John's Gospel, chapter 1, as we did this morning. And it says there, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehendeth it not. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light that lighted every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Okay, uh, let's pray again. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for these words tonight, Lord. Bless our time, anoint with your Holy Spirit, Lord. We are nothing in ourselves. seek your face, we seek your presence, we need your anointing, your inspiration, your f filling of your Holy Spirit tonight, Lord. Guide, Lord, pour out your Spirit, we pray, and encourage us, Lord. Touch, Lord, we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. While we were uh, reading this passage this morning, and just focusing on the the light of men, uh, the light that shines in the darkness. Uh, as we said, this is a dark time of the year. We're looking out the window; it's very dark outside. But there is light. Uh, you can see me tonight. Why? Because I have a lamp here, uh, uh, shining a light. Uh, light is about communication light is about life light, light is about information light is power light is energy and we have here 
the one true light. And I like it as well because it was, it's talking about John. Uh, Pastor Shallow was speaking about Simeon um, earlier on today, uh, and how he, you know he he heard from the Spirit of God. He was guided by the Spirit of God, and he could say that his eyes had seen the Christ, uh, the, the 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 one that God had prepared. And actually, you know, here we have also John the Baptist mentioned. We were talking a little bit today about what um, Zacharias said when he spoke to his his newborn son. Thou child shall be a prophet of the highest. That's quite a, a statement when you look at a baby, you know, most of the times when people look at a newborn baby, they say, oh, he's got his granddad's eyelashes and, you know, he's got his uncle's nostrils and, and all of that sort of thing where, you know, they they focus on, you know, the features and the health and, oh, he was this weight, he was this, he has this amount of hair. But actually, you know what? When Zacharias looked at John the Baptist as a newborn baby, he said, you're going to be a prophet of the Lord and a prophet of the Most High. And the day spring from on high is going to visit us. The light of the world is going to come into this world. And you are going to be a prophet of it. And I was thinking about that tonight. And we won't be too long tonight because I know maybe people have got their focus on other things tonight. And I, I, there's no judgment in that at all. Uh, but it, you know, it says that the, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. Think about that. That all men through him might believe. What a, an onus on John the Baptist. That all men might believe. But his testimony was key. The fact that he had a miraculous birth, he had a, a, an individual calling, he was a very uh, striking individual from his his method of uh, mode of life, his his diet, his dress sense, he stood out from the crowd, and he was that one that was called the voice crying in the wilderness prepare you the way of the Lord as the prophet Isaiah had said and what is he talking about he's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ that all men through him might believe in other words this is someone who's going to testify to what God is doing and uh, we were talking about that a little bit this morning in the wrap afterwards about how actually you know what it's great it's great to remember what God has done for us in our life. It's great to have a testimony of God's faithfulness. But it's also great to have assurance in our life as to what God is going to do. Our life is not over. Uh, this is not the end of the story. That we have a God who is going to do great things. John the Baptist was sent not to preach about himself, not to preach about what God had done, not to remind the children of Israel or the nation of Judah that of what God had done for them in the past. Plenty of people had done that before. But he was there to, to let them know what God was going to do in the future and what God was doing now and the miraculous thing that he was going to do through sending the Lord Jesus Christ into the world. I'm thinking about that, you know, uh, the, the, the light, the true light that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Every one of us, we have a spark uh, of life in us that has come from God the Creator, God the Father. But every one of us has also that potential for salvation. Why? Because the Lord Jesus Christ has come for us. He's come because he loved us. He's come to lay down his life for us on our behalf. He's come to go to Calvary. That was the plan we were talking this morning about the, the, 
the overriding plan, the, the, the far-reaching plan that God the Father had for mankind. And that's what we find here in, this, in the Christmas story, the start of the Christmas story. In him was light. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Think about that as well, the light of men. There is one light that is for all men. There is one light that is different from every other light. There is one light that shines throughout the darkness and, and completely destroys and overcomes the darkness. The Lord Jesus Christ. We cover our houses in lights at this time of year. We cover our trees, our decorations in lights at this time of the year. Why? Well, because they look pretty and they're twinkly. But actually, you know what? More than that, it's because we have uh, the light of the world has been given to us, to a dark world, to a, a, a place of depression, a place of the valley of the shadow of death as we read this morning those that sat in darkness have seen a great light and uh, those that dwell in the, in, the, in the shadow of death you know in one sense we're all under the shadow of death every one of us um, it's, uh, it's something that casts a shadow over all of our lives our own mortality we were talking about that this morning as well as it is um, just over a year since our friend and sister in the Lord Janice uh, went into eternity and uh, we were remembering that and saying that uh, for her family's sake how actually when we lose a loved one it does alter our perception of things there's a softening, there's a tenderness that comes in for every one of us when we lose someone that we love and uh, we see that very clearly uh, in, in different people's lives and maybe we've experienced it ourselves that when someone uh, passes we were speaking to a, a lady this afternoon at outreach and she uh, her name was Anya but she had seen a lot of suffering in her life and lost a lot of people to various situations uh, and she said that it had shaken her faith that actually uh, to see you know children and uh, uh, young mothers of, of, of young children to who lost their lives to cancer was a grueling thing was a was a was a, a thing that caused her to, to doubt whether God could be real and you know we were saying well actually you know often this brokenness brings us to the Lord seeing great suffering or going through it, a, a, a great loss like that is an opportunity for us to discover the God of all comfort and discover the God who loves us and often when there is great darkness there is a, a, an intensity to the light that shines every one of us has that life spring that day spring that potential for life not just for bios life not just for physical life but for supernatural and eternal life that's what Jesus came to offer that's what Jesus came to promise and that's what Jesus brought and delivered when he went to the cross and he rose from the dead he won a victory over death that whosoever believes on him should not perish but have eternal life that was the victory of the cross that is why we celebrate it and that's why we celebrate Christmas because it's the coming of the Lord Jesus and you know maybe we won't be uh, so much longer but just thinking about that verse 12 but as many as received him to him gave he the power to become the sons of God even to them that believe in his name 
think about that for a minute. It, he came, he was in the world and the world was made by him. The world knew not. The creator of the universe came down uh, to live amongst men. And nobody recognized it. The Pharisees called him names. They even said that he had a devil. Um, the uh, Roman authorities put him, sent him to a cross. Uh, many people, the Sadducees, uh, mocked and asked silly questions. Uh, many different groups didn't recognize him. They did his own family. Even didn't believe him at first. And it's like, wow, he came to his own. And his own received him not. His own people, the nation that he had brought out of captivity, the nation that he had led through the wilderness, the nation that he had brought into the promised land, the nation that he had made a covenant with, the nation whose temple he had gone and dwelt in, as the chicane of glory is the spirit of the living God. Now rejecting God when he came to the earth in human form, he came to his own, his own received him not, but there were some that received him and there were those that received him and there are still those that can receive him now and that is the hope and that is the life and that is the, the light that we see at this Christmas period and that is the excitement that we have yeah get excited about the football get, but get more excited about the Lord Jesus Christ and the spirit of the living God and the light of all men and the Lord Jesus Christ coming down from heaven um, that as many as receive him have the power to become the sons of God simply by believing in his name is enough for us to become the sons of God that's an incredible truth incredibly powerful but it's real the God of all grace, the God of all mercy, the God who gave his life to forgive us, to pay a price for us. We could go forward in trusting him. The God of the reality, and it says, you know, that which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Our salvation is done by God. It's not about human will. We don't get to decide who goes to heaven and who doesn't. We don't get to decide. It's not about our will. It's not about our flesh. It's not about how good we can be or what we can prove. It's not about our own human effort. We're born of God. It says not of blood. And that's the blood of this world. Yes, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ did pay for us. But... Uh, that's not what he's, he's talking about here it's not like a blood it's not just by inheritance that's what it's really saying there it's not just by well because I'm born into this family I go to heaven uh, I was talking to somebody at work the other day they said did you see that survey that said that less than 50% of the population of the UK now identify as Christian uh, are you worried are you concerned about that and I said no actually not at all I said, actually, I think the problem was in the past, too many people were nominal Christians. They, they had the idea that, oh, I'm a Christian, why? Because my great-grandfather was a lay preacher in the Methodists, or because my, my mother is a vicarette in the Church of England, and it's like, oh, that makes me a Christian. And it's like, no, it's not by blood. It's not by the will of man. It's not by any uh, will of the flesh at all it's something that is done by God that the Lord Jesus Christ came to the earth he laid down his life he went to the cross for us he rose again and he gave us eternal life for those who believe in his name for those that have chosen it as him as their Messiah as their Savior and recognize him like Simeon did uh, as being the 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 Creator, the Saviour, the Messiah, and recognize him like John did, as behold the Lamb of God, 
that taketh away the sin of the world. And that's what it, that all men through him might believe. John's testimony, John's witness. That's who he told him. That's what he told him. He told his own disciples to go and follow Jesus. And many of them did. But uh, that promise to us is still there today. That we can believe on his name. And we can have eternal life in Christ because of what he has done for us. And the other thing as well. As we said this morning, and we want to emphasize that again, is that just as Jesus came to the earth, just as he went to the cross, went to the the tomb, came out of the tomb, all of the things as he promised he would do, he also promised that he would return again for his church, for his people. And that is the other thing that we want to proclaim, that the Lord Jesus Christ will return. The advent of Christ's coming the first time round is, is celebrated every year at Christmas. But the advent of his second coming should be celebrated every day all year round, that we would be ready for Christ's return at any point. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord. Thank you for who you are and thank you for what you've done. And thank you for the fact that we have a saviour. A light in a dark place. The light, the one true light, the light of this world. The light that lights every man that comes into this world. And thank you, Lord, for the opportunity of salvation to everyone on this planet, the same opportunity, the same grace, the same heart of God, the same plan and the same desire and the same ex execution of that plan. Thank you Lord for who you are. Thank you that you are our Saviour and that everyone who believes on your name is able to become a son of God. Lord. We praise you for that Lord. Thank you Lord that we can be saved from our own failures, our own weakness, our own uh, desires, every sin by what you've done at the Lord uh, on the, the cross of Calvary. Thank you, Lord. We worship you tonight. And Lord, we pray if there's anyone out there who has never before believed in your name, but tonight they want to believe in your name, Lord, we just pray that they would pray now. Lord, come into my heart. I know that I'm a failure. I know that I need your saving power. I know that I'm weak. I'm a sinner. But I know also that you love me, that you came to this earth for me. And that everything that you've accomplished on my behalf is powerful enough that I could say I am a, I am a son of God now by what you've done. Thank you, Lord. We worship you now, Lord. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to sign off now. It's probably time for the National Anthems to start on the football. So uh, take care, God bless, and come on, England. <laughs> 